In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe factors that make it difficult to estimate useful life. So if we see an essay question like this, we probably want to first think about, okay, what is useful life related to? Useful life in and of itself uh, doesn't mean much unless we apply it to something, that something being property, plant, and equipment. So when we think of useful life in the context here, we're talking about property, plant, and equipment, and then we might want to define what property, plant, and equipment is and the context of the useful life. So property, plant, and equipment is going to be something that uh, we're going to have it. It's going to be something tangible, something we can touch, feel, something that uh, usually has a useful life over uh, a year. So meaning we're going to use it for an extended period of time in order to help generate revenue in the future. Therefore, when we purchase it, we're going to put it on the books as an asset rather than expensing it at the point in time of purchase. So we're going to put it on the books as an asset then allocate that cost of that asset over its useful life. And that's in accordance with the matching principle. So what we're doing with the useful life is trying to say, here's the cost of this equipment. How are we going to allocate it in some way, whether it be straight line or some accelerated method? How are we going to allocate that cost to the time periods that it's used in order to generate revenue in accordance with the matching principle? So the, the useful life then is one estimate within the calculations of uh, the depreciation calculation. Depreciation calculation is an estimate. The useful life is a huge component in that estimate. And when you think about depreciation, you may be asking yourself, well, how would someone come up with the useful life? Isn't that pretty arbitrary to, to get the useful life? I mean, can't you have a pretty big difference in terms of, of what you're going to be allocated in terms of net income based on what you decide the useful life to be? And the answer is, yeah, you can, you can change things a lot. So, Notice if you're talking about like the tax code, they'll actually have some pretty stringent regulations in terms of what qualifies as a useful life. But um, those tax codes aren't geared towards the best financial reporting. They're, they, have, they have other motives other than just good financial reporting. For good financial reporting, we want to find the best useful life that makes the most sense, the one that's the most accurate, what we think is our best estimate. We're going to try to make our best estimate of how long something's going to last. Now, when we think about that, uh, there's a couple factors that would go into consideration. One would be just deterioration. You know, how much is this going to deteriorate in value, decline in its productivity, uh, and therefore how should we allocate just the normal decline uh, in value just through the usage. There's some other factors though. One, one could be just the inadequacy of the equipment as we grow, meaning we may be buying a machine that uh, suits our needs now, but the capacity is not there once we grow to a certain degree and we may not know whether we're going to grow to a certain degree we may for example if we make a if we bought a printer that prints so many pages uh per second or whatever like that and if we bought if we got bigger we might need uh we might need the printer to be able to print more pages per second or uh, produce faster and so it might be sufficient for our needs now but as the company grows and uh, it may not be sufficient and it's very difficult of course to calculate what the company is going to do in terms of the capacity and needs of this particular piece of equipment. It's also possible that there could be obsolescence that we it's difficult to know, especially in today's uh, time, where we could buy a piece of equipment that uh, pretty soon gets outdated, a new piece of equipment comes out that's a lot more efficient and a lot better, making uh, the old piece a lot obsolete. And if that happens, it's going to be difficult for us to calculate, well, when when is that going to happen? When's this new technology going to take place and make the piece of equipment obsolete? So there's a, there's a couple components there. Just note that when we when we use an estimate, it is just an estimate, but we have to use the estimate in order to make our financial statements as good as they can, as best guess as we can. We know the cost of it, but we have to estimate in some way uh, the decline in, in the value. We have to estimate the, the allocation of the cost to expense in some way and we all we can do is do our best with that one way one estimated part one big estimate in that calculation is of course the useful life